More people working from home and seeing fewer people, many are reevaluating what forms of personal care are necessary and what they can skip. It's all examined in a new book looking into the science and social influences on our hygiene. And as Errol Barnett found out, our concept of cleanliness is an evolving one. It's a cornerstone of our lives, especially in the age of COVID. But for this doctor and journalist... You didn't shower for five years. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> uh, well, as you might assume, it's sort of a long story. The more he learned about the history of washing, the less he did it. I was testing out this thing some people have dabbled with in terms of either quitting shampoo, quitting body washes, quitting deodorant. And I decided to give it all up after gradually weaning myself off. James Hamblin's book, Clean, The New Science of Skin, examines how our definition of cleanliness has evolved over time. During the Industrial Revolution in Europe, you saw people crowding into cities and it got really dirty. The air was filthy, the streets were filled with sewage. So there became a legitimate need for people to uh, be able to clean themselves up. And at the same time, we became able to produce these things. And people started assuming, well, if a little bit is good, then, then more is better. In the 19th century, the concept of being clean became correlated with your social standing. Did you smell um, like cashmere bouquet soap or did you smell like, like the masses? And with it, a burgeoning soap industry took hold, selling the idea of being clean, promoting products as more than just tools to help you wash, but ways to make you more desirable. Everything from making you appear younger to helping you lose weight. Good afternoon, radio listeners. And as radio emerged, so did the sales tactics. The Colgate Palmolive Peach Company, makers of fine products for 130 years, send you Clara Lou and M. Clara Lou and M is credited as being the first nationally broadcast soap opera. Never till my dying day will I forget how he looked that day I stepped off the train in Peoria. Turning drama into sales. Now, a little while ago, I urged you to get three cakes of Palmolive soap the beauty soap you can count on to safeguard the youth and smooth loveliness of your skin. Soap was the original entertainment ad. Tell me about that. Yeah. You know, soap operas themselves were produced by soap companies. How do we know whose child she's going to bear? Bob Lang's or Dick's? The same happened on television, selling dramatized love stories to boost sales. Change to regular cleansing and this personal size of pure mild ivory. A new age of consumerism emerged. The market became so competitive that they had to invent new products, tell us that new rituals were necessary to our health in order to beat out the competition. I found something that makes you feel cleaner than soap. One of the points you're making is that we have been over-soaped. <laughs> I think that's pretty clear. At this point, it seems that there are a good number of people who could well stand to to cut back, who are kind of drying out their skin, getting into this cycle of overwashing and then needing to, to moisturize or having, you know, outbreaks of acne, eczema, sort of disrupting the skin's uh, normal microbial ecosystem. How many microbes do we have living on our skin right now? We have about a million bacteria per square centimeter on our skin. Dr. Julie Segre is a branch chief and senior investigator at the National Human Genome Research Institute. Rather than fully wash away what's on our bodies, her team studies and maps it. We can't try to strip away this, um, all of the bacteria that live on our skin, because there are a lot of bacteria that are actually providing a health benefit. It's called the microbiome, a collection of all the microorganisms living on our skin and inside us all the time. These good bacteria serve as a shield against the more pathogenic bacteria. So the good bacteria moving in means the bad bacteria won't be able to jump in. Yeah, I mean, like, 
you know, when you're looking for a house in a new neighborhood, if all the houses are already li- being lived in, there's no place to go. Both Dr. Segre and Hamblin emphasize the importance of regular hand washing, especially with the coronavirus still spreading. But Hamblin says we should be more discerning, even as modern skin and beauty products promote natural and probiotic formulas as new selling points. So it sounds like you're suggesting we should reevaluate everything we do and not necessarily go five years without showering (laughs) but what i would never tell anyone not to shower uh any more than i would tell anyone not to eat their favorite food i would say that if you would like to do less that it's completely medically fine and there's not a scientific reason not to and you may even benefit for cbs this morning saturday errol barnett new york who showered uh, I did. Who's still going to keep showering? Yeah, uh, yeah. I hear what they're saying, though. The microbes, it makes sense. Yeah, a balance, right? Between, like, not just constantly. There it is. Yeah, a balance.